everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. Today we are up at camp for our next project, next step of our project of our cabin build. It's foundation day. So dad and Cam and I are here, and then we actually have a guest as well. Where'd my guest go? Where'd you go? There he is. So this is Clinton. Say hi, Clinton. Hey, you too. So uh, long story, but Clinton is a follower of the channel. He says he's been watching it for a while, and uh, Providence has brought us together today. So he's going to come hang out with us and uh, help pour some peers with us. So come along, we've got our concrete mixer unloaded. We're gonna get our water set up and we're gonna show you uh, how we're going to be able to draw water and get water to our concrete mixer and do all that to get our piers board. Okay, so if you follow the channel, you know that we do rain collection off of our tent deck here. So we've got 250 gallons completely full at this point with this IBC tote. And of course, all we have is an outlet. So we need to get water to our cement mixer over there so we can mix up and then go over here and pour our piers. Well, um, I had this company, Foting. They sent me a 1.6 horsepower pump and we're gonna give that a shot because I believe this is gonna be well, well more pump than we need, way more pump than we need, I guess I should say, but should do the trick well. It has uh, one inch NPT input and one inch NPT outputs, but we've, I've gone ahead and reduced it, so I put PVC and brass so we can put water hose attachments. So water hose uh, male, water hose female, and we can get this going. So the neat thing about this is I believe this is right at 8 amp. I got to go back and look, but I think it's right about 8 amp. So we're going to try to use our 2000 watt solar generator to run this. If not, we've got the Honda generator as a backup, but we're going to give that a shot, see if that's going to work, and uh, we'll lift water out of this and be able to uh, run our water hose over there. I, my IBC tote thread is messed up, so you may be wondering, why don't you just thread it up there, but those threads are jacked up. i got to get that fixed so I can get my uh, adapter screwed on there. So what we'll do is just drop the hose down, and we have the opportunity to prime the pump here with this... Uh, this removable cap and that'll get us primed and then we'll be able to run. So let me get that set up and we'll see what we can do. Putting a quick disconnect on here uh, simply because I don't have to keep twisting the hose around. Don't like getting into that much hose reaction. But the other side I don't have to worry about a quick connect because it's the swivel part of the hose. You know what I mean. Now I haven't Teflon taped any of this yet. Um, you know, with PVC, sometimes you need Teflon, sometimes you don't. So obviously if it leaks a little, it's no big deal here. Um, we get some power, get my spray nozzle and get all that checked out. I honestly can't remember if this is the inlet or the outlet. So we'll find that out here in a second. <laughs> and of course we'll need to prime it as well. <laughs> big slug holding <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave the slug out. Drink deeply, my friend. Helps if you get it in there. No, the hose inlet's out here, though. So. Yeah, so you might have enough already. Usually it doesn't take much once the suction. Can't run it. I need your generator. All right, so I think our amp draw is a little bit more than I anticipated because um, the 2000 watts not handling it. So we're going to try the Honda. Hopefully, the Honda can generate enough. That's right. You need an app that'll pull the handle. Do 
generator right now. All right, so the startup amperage on this is pretty high, but obviously once it gets going, it, uh, it runs fine. So that's the issue I'm running into, is just that startup amperage turning that vein with the water in it, it's causing that, that load to be to exceed what the startup peak can be on that uh, solar generator. So the Honda's taking care of that. You can see we got good water pressure here, getting the air out of the line, so we'll be good to go. So the plan with this pump is obviously to use it for what we're doing today. Sorry, flip that back on if you will, But for long term, again, I gotta make sure I can power it with either a larger solar system or using my uh, small gas generator to be able to use it here for the cabin to lift water from our cistern that we're eventually going to put in. So that'll be handy for that. And I can put a pressure switch on it, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to link below the information from Foting so you can check it out if you want to add this to your off-grid camp or any operation. I'm also going to use this. I've got an idea for using this at home to irrigate our greenhouse as well. So it could have multiple uses to it. So we'll get into that as we need to. All right, let's get some uh, pier set. Well, the spry young men are dil diligently working on digging our first two post holes that we'll use those as references. So those, this is where Clinton's working is going to be our, our master pier. Uh, pylon, concrete tube, whatever you want to call it. We'll start there and uh, we'll do our strike our first line here to where Cam's working and that's what we'll establish our 90s off of and go from there. Let's see, who's this stuff? Back up. Didn't make a mess, then I can't see what's going on. This wheelbarrow is the wrong wheelbarrow. <laughs> it's a gardener uh, wheelbarrow, and it's got a raw nose on it. I'll just show it. That's covered in there. Stump here, buddy. Yeah, Sit right there with the other ones. Oh, 
Yeah, you're going to just scrape all that into that. Don't forget the rods there, brother. You didn't put any rods in it yet, did you? Oh, no, I didn't. What's the matter? That'll be all right, buddy. All right, somebody needs to come in just a, um, just an inch. We need to come together an inch. How to estimate material or what? <laughs> I think it's only through the highly skilled and trained shovel leaves, yes. All comes down to transport, doesn't it? That's right. You can, you can write on the engine. No, they're not. Very good last all right, so we got all of our concrete poured, and I think we had what a teaspoon of concrete left. <laughs> so much for buying extra, but uh, came out perfectly. So excited about that. So I want to show you something. This is this is where wisdom comes with age. So this is a pro tip that Dad came up with, and I didn't even think about this, but this is really clever. So if you notice our bracket here kind of faces that way and the opposite corner faces the other and each corner is facing an opposite direction. You may think, well, that's messed up, but why is that, Dad? Why do we do that? So if we need to slide anything to make up the square of our subflooring, we have the room to pick an end that's got an open end on it. This one's open end. We can slide this way. If we need to slide that one, that one has the open end. We can slide it that way. Same thing on all four corners. If we've got to make up a little difference, we've got the ability to slide and not be bound by 
dedicated dead end corners. Ain't that cool? So yeah, so so yeah, I love the idea. I never thought of it. So even though we're using six by six piers with the brackets, you know, you don't have any play this way, but you've got some play this way. You can go half inch, quarter inch, whatever, and it doesn't really mess things up. You still get the strength of the bracket holding the pier. And same here, you know, same with all these. So we have the ability, and so the middle ones, where we're going to have our floor joist, our rim joist, come over here at 10 inches and break right over top of this 6x6, six six, then the same thing. We have the ability to shift one way or the other if, uh, for some reason, we're not breaking right at 10 feet. So we've got that. So I thought that was just absolutely brilliant. I mean, that's, that's Yoda level right there, so... Very cool, and that allows us to adjust as we need to. So concrete's gonna set up, hopefully, and then uh, we will be ready to um, start start doing some framework. We believe the material's gonna be delivered here short, shortly, when well, next, next week or so, we'll have material delivered, and we'll be ready to start stick building. So we'll make sure to incorporate that in a video coming up as well. All right, so uh, before we take off, um, I do wanna point out that uh, some of you guys commented on our last video in this series about not needing that center beam. And I appreciate that input. They got me thinking, so I called my buddy Jared, who's a structural engineer, does tons and tons of house inspections, asked him to look at my plans, and, and he concurred. He said, yeah, I'd do away with the center beam, but go to um, so triple up my rim joist and on the long side and double up the rim joist on the short side, and you can do away with the center beam and go with 16 on centers instead of 24. So you can see here, I adjust the plans accordingly to, uh, to show the triple rim joist and the double rim joist. So what that allows us to do is eliminate the center beam and the six by six horizontal beams. So the piers will come up and the floor joist, rim joist will sit right on top of the beams and uh, right, on t yeah, right on top of the piers, the posts, and then we'll still do our cross bracing. So that eliminated the need for a center pier. So instead of doing nine, we did eight. He suggested still keeping, keeping our center ones on the ends so we could have that additional cross bracing. We get a lot of wind that comes this way. And with that wind, we don't want the building to be racking, of course. Well, another cool thing that worked out today is a guy to meet a new friend. This is Clinton, and man, I really appreciate you. Absolutely. Coming out and working. Pleasure working with you. He worked his butt off. It's nice having young friends. <laughs> so now he came out, uh, worked his butt off. He and Cam were uh, digging holes and rooting up stumps and everything. So, uh, man, I can't thank you enough. Absolutely. Happy to be here. Awesome. Awesome. Well, all right. So we're going to uh, load up and head out and see if we can get home, get a shower and be ready to start framing up. Appreciate everybody watching. Y'all take care.